Today we're going to begin a new series of videos on my YouTube channel and we're going to work through several uh, college algebra homework uh, homework assignments that I've given over the years. So we're just going to start with the very first one. And the very first part of college algebra is really just a review. Uh, so this first one is reviewing factoring. Now one of the first things you must always remember whenever you're factoring is you always look for the GCF. Always look for the greatest common factor. It doesn't matter what you're doing. When you're trying to factor, you always try to factor that out first. If there is something other than one. I mean, everything can have a common factor of one, but that doesn't really help us out. Uh, in this first one, you look at all of these three terms, and what they have in common is a four. So four can be factored out of all of these. You also notice that they all contain factors of x, and the most that they contain most that each of them contain is 3. It's going to be restricted by the one that has the smallest exponent. And the same thing is going to be true for the y's. Everybody has at least three factors of y. So if I factor that out, I'm going to see what is left over. Of course, if I have 8, 8 is made up of 4 times 2. x to the fifth is made up of x to the third and x squared. And I have 10 factors of y. I take out 3. That leaves me with 7. And I'll proceed on to the, next, uh, to the next term. 12 divided by 4 is 3. I have one factor of x, and I would have four factors of y. And then finally here, this is a negative 4. So negative 4 is made up of 4 times negative 1. You had x to the third, but you took out x to the third. So there are no more factors of x left. You had y to the third, and you took out y to the third, so you're done. The only other thing you could try to do is to see if this guy factors further. But it doesn't, so this is all that you can do. Now we go from factoring out the GCF to having four terms. It's based off of factoring out the Grace common factor, but you have to do this in groups. You want to make sure that you do this the correct way. A lot of times people don't, and it's really frustrating. If you look in this first group, there's a common factor here of x squared. So if you factor out the x squared, you would then be left with 2x minus 5. In the second group, which contains negative 4x plus 10, the common factor here is a negative 2. See, whatever you lead off with right here is the sign that needs to go in front here, which is a minus. And then 2 is the common factor between these two terms. So if I factor out a negative 2 or divide out that negative 2, you'd be left with a positive 2x. You see how you multiply this to get negative 4x? And then you would have a negative 5. And again, just a few moments to check this. Negative 2 times negative 5 gives you positive 10. And then what you see here is that there is a common factor in these larger groups. So 2x minus 5 is a common factor. And it was the common factor to both x squared and minus 2. Now, I guess before I box this, you want to make sure that you have factored everything completely. There's nothing else to do here. This is a linear factor. There's nothing to do here. Um, if you remember the difference of squares, this is a square, this is a difference, but 2 is not a perfect square. So in terms of factoring using integers, uh, we'd be done here. All right, we'll move on to number 3. And number 3 is just a nice trinomial. It has a lead coefficient here of 1, which is what we like to see. And when we have that, it's just a matter of breaking this guy down into the two binomial factors. You want to find numbers that will multiply to give you 36, but you want them to add to give you 13. Okay. So another way I, I work this is that I look at this plus here and I go, I need to take the factors of 36, they need to add to give me 13. So those factors would be 9 and 4, and they both must be positive. They have to have the same sign. Um, since you have to multiply to get a positive 36, they must both be the same sign. 
All right, let's look down at number four. Now, what you should see here with number four is that all of these coefficients, and even the constant term, are even. That means they have a common factor, uh, at least a common factor of two. So we can factor out the two. We want to factor out the two, what's left will be x squared minus 7x minus 30. Now, we're not done. Just because we take out the common factor doesn't mean that we're done. We want to see if there's more that, uh, that we can do here. And you'll notice that inside here, just looking at this piece, this is a trinomial with 1x squared, so it should be one of those nice ones to factor. But the thing is, you have to make sure that you remember that there's a common factor of 2. And then the trinomial we expect to factor like this. So I expect x squared to break down as x and x. Now, look at the minus sign we have right here. I need factors of 30 whose difference is 7. So multiply to get 30, but take the difference of those factors to get 7. Well, there are a lot of different ways to multiply to get 30. But there's only one combination that has a difference of 7, and that would be 10 and 3. Now, since this middle term is negative, that means the larger factor must also be negative. Okay, uh, Make sure you check this. Negative 10 times negative 3 is a negative 30. And when I do the inside and outside pieces here, this is a negative 10x. And this gives me a positive 3x. So you see that we do end up with a correct middle term of negative 7x. And if you multiply this times 2, you'll get the negative 14x that was in your original problem. So it's always a good idea to check your work on these problems. All right, well, let's see what we have on the other side of this homework. Here we have x squared minus 11x plus 28. First, is there a common factor for all of these guys? And the answer is no. Second thing is to see that you have three terms. And when I have three terms, I expect this to factor as two binomial factors like this. Since this is just x squared, I expect it to be x times x. Since this is a positive 28, I know that when I break it down, the signs must be the same. And they have to match this guy. So they must both be negative. So you want factors of 28 that add to give you 11. Well, the factors of 28 that add to give you 11 will be 4 and 7. And if you're not sure about this, you can list all of the factors for 28. That's 1 times 28, 2 times 14, and 4 times 7. So that is the only combination that adds to give you 11. Boy, I like these easy ones, don't you? x squared plus 5x minus 84. There's no common factor here other than 1. It's a trinomial. So I expect this guy to go ahead and factor as two binomial factors. x squared breaks down as x times x. I need factors of 84. So I need to multiply to get 84. But I need to be able to subtract those guys to get 5. If you know your multiplication tables, you know that the difference of 12 and 7 gives you 5, and when you multiply those, it gives you 84. Since this middle coefficient is positive, the larger factor must also be positive. So you can easily check this. This is a positive 12x in the middle, along with a negative 7x on the outside, and that's a positive 5x. Positive times a negative is going to give you that negative 84. It's a good thing we learned our multiplication tables way back when we were knee-high to a grasshopper. Number seven. Some may say that two is a common factor, but two does not go into nine evenly. So there's no common factor other than one. It's a trinomial, so we expect this guy to factor as two binomial factors. Now, two x squared we break down using the x and x for x squared, but you also have to break down the 2. So we can just do 2x and x. Notice that every term in this polynomial is positive, so that 
these signs here must also be positive. But you've got to break down the 10. And the thing is, you can't break down the 10 to get 9. That's not what it's saying here. Your factors of 10 are 1 and 10 and 2 and 5. And you have to be very careful about where you place these guys. You want to make sure that you get the combination that will give a plus 9x once you check on the inside and on the outside. And what you see here is that whatever number you put in this position will multiply times the 2, so it's going to double that. So you have to be careful. If I try to say 1 and 10 like this, that's going to give me 20 and 1, so that's, that doesn't make any sense. That's way too big. And you may say, okay, what if I swap these and I say 10 and 1? And this is where I would say this is a combination that's not even worth trying. 2x and 10 have a common factor of 2, but this guy didn't have a common factor of 2. So there's no way you can do that down here. So logic tells us that it can't be that combination. And you can watch some of my other videos about factoring to see uh, some of these tricks that you can play with. So that leaves me with 2 and 5. I just said you can't have common factors here, so the 2 cannot go here, and it must go here which leaves this as the only place for the 5. When you check your work, you get plus 5x. On the outside is plus 4x. And there's the plus 9x that we so desperately needed. So everything here checks out. Notice what I said, it checks out. We are checking our work. Don't get lazy. Number 8, just trinomial. But before I go to my two sets of parentheses like I did above, Look to see if there's a common factor. There isn't one, so we should be able to go to my two binomial factors. To break down the 6, I can use either 1 and 6 or 2 and 3. For the 20, I can use 1 and 20, 2 and 10, or 4 and 5. List your factor pairs. Now, I talk about this again in one of my other videos about looking at your factor pairs to see if you have a common factor. 2 and 10 have a common factor of 2, but check this common factor against the middle term. Does 2 go into 7? The answer is no, so that means I can never use this guy. If 2 had gone into this middle term, then that would have told you that you should use that. Now, I'm not really sure where to go here. We have a lot of different options. Uh, one of the things that I suggest is to start with the smaller factors first. For example, I would start with 2 and 3. That means I'd break down the 6x as 2x and 3x. And I would break down the 20 using 4 and 5. Now, does this always work? No, but it's just a general rule of thumb that I like to try. So if I try to put the 4 here, it's going to give me a contradiction with the 2 because they have a common factor and I didn't have one up here. So it means I would have to put the 4 here and the 5 here. But does this work out? Well, notice I haven't put signs here yet. And the reason I haven't put signs is because this is a negative. I don't know if this is a minus or a plus, or if this is a plus then a minus. I don't know. But check what you have here. This gives you 15x. And this gives you 8x. We know that these signs are going to have to be opposites, which means I'm going to have to have opposite signs of these terms from the middle of the foil. But since I need a negative, that means this guy has to be negative and this guy has to be positive. And you see that this ends up giving you a negative 7x. So to backtrack with the signs, that means the minus must be here and the plus must be right there. So when you check everything, you see that you do get your 6x squared, you get your negative 20. And that's the easy stuff. But checking the inside, you get negative 15x, positive 8x on the outside, and you get the correct middle term.